Good morning. Thanks for joining me for day 16. We're again in 1 Peter chapter 3. We're going to be looking at verses 3 through 6 this morning. Um, yesterday we kind of talked, or last time we talked about uh, specifically uh, how the relationship uh, to wives, to husbands, and, and this idea of submission. And I, I mentioned the fact that when we got into this session, we were going to look at this idea of appearance. And I think a lot of times, and even though it is directed at the wives, it's directed at women, I think we unduly put a lot of this on women. And I, I, really, it, I really kind of picture in my head uh, something that kind of goes both for, for guys and, and gals. Um, let's look into it in verse 3 of uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. Verse 3 starts with, Do not let the adornment, your, your adornment be merely outward, arranging the hair, wearing the, of gold, or uh, putting on a fine apparel. I, I, I want to stop there for just a second because oftentimes we kind, of, we kind of put this on our ladies and say, Well, ladies, you spend too much time on your appearance. I, I think that's kind of stereotypical. Uh, not that it's not always true, but you, I know the argument can be made guys don't normally wear makeup and all that kind of stuff, but uh, I think most of us who have either uh, go back in our minds, guys, uh, of our teenage years, or those of you who are parents of teenage guys, uh, you can remember all the time that was spent in front of a mirror. Uh, the hair had to be just right. Uh, yeah. At, at one point in my life, I, I mean, believe it or not, I spent time in front of a mirror making sure my hair looked right. I don't have that problem anymore because I don't have any more left. I don't spend that time in the mirror trying to get my hair looking the way I want it to because it just, it does, it's never going to look the way I want it to at this point in time. But guys, we do spend a lot of time on our appearance and sometimes as much, if not more, than some of our ladies spend on their appearance. We need to be very careful because Peter here is, is admonishing us. He's saying, don't let the outward appearance be everything. It's, it's okay to look good. Don't get me wrong. I don't expect everybody to, to never look in the mirror. I don't expect everybody when they come back to church to to basically look like they've been out of church for several months, that they just rolled out of bed, and they just look horrible, like they really haven't even taken a shower, brushed their teeth, or anything like that. I'm not saying that, and neither is Peter. He's not saying it's not okay to dress yourself up or to look nice. That's not what he's saying. But what he is saying is he's saying, don't make your outward appearance everything that you are. We're, there are so many people in our world that, that they're everything. All of their attention is focused on how they look. And that really draws us away from what the truth of being a believer in Jesus Christ is. Go into verse 4 because you'll find that truth in verse 4. He says, rather, let it be the hidden person of, of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. I love that phrase, the hidden person of the heart. Peter here is saying, the, the person you are on the inside is more important than the person you display on the outside. He's not saying that your outward appearance is meaningless. But what he is saying is, it is worth less than who you are on the inside. If you are an ugly, wretched person on the inside, you can look like the most beautiful person in the world and no one wants to be around you. There are plenty of people in our world who have the physical attributes, the, the looks, and everybody just fawns all over them. But their attitude, their heart is just dark. I think the, the easiest uh, way to understand that for most of us is the idea and the attitude of complaining. 
most of us, we go through bouts of, of complaining. And I think even in our world today and what we're, what we're being uh, asked to do when it comes to all of these restrictions for quarantine, uh, our natural inclination is to complain. It is to, uh, for lack of a better way of saying it, to whine about our circumstances. We're not getting what we want, so we're going to whine about it. We're going to let everybody know how unhappy we are with our circumstances. The problem with that is it, it's not an attitude that Scripture really wants us to have as believers. And when you hang around people who complain all the time, what happens to you? You're miserable. And that misery gets into your own heart. It gets into that hidden person that's inside of you. And what do you end up doing? You end up complaining. It's an ugly, contagious thing. And you know what? Most of us don't like to hang around people who complain all the time. They're not enjoyable to be around. They're not even enjoyable to speak to most of the time. You know, when somebody who does nothing but complain comes your way and they're coming right at you and you know they're going to talk to you, what do you want to do? You want to go, oh, them again. And just walk away. Don't be that person because the hidden person of your heart, while you may have everything settled on the outside, everything may be beautiful, everything may look nice, guys, you may be... Uh, the most handsome guy in the room. But when that hidden person comes out, what people see is ugliness. And what Peter is trying to reiterate to us here today is he's trying to say the person you are on the inside is far more important than who you are on the outside. Verse 5, it says, For in this manner, in former times, holy women who trusted God also adorn themselves, being submissive to their own husband. There you go. He's not saying that it's wrong to dress yourself up. But their attitude was one of submission to their husbands. Their attitude was in the right place. The hidden person of their heart was in the right place. So it was okay. How do you know? How, what, what example can we give? We'll go to verse 6. He says, As Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are, and he's talking about those of us who are believers, because Abraham and Sarah are considered the, the, basically the father and mother of faith, whose daughters you are, if you do good and are not afraid with any terror. So if we are exercising faith, and, and again, I know this was addressed to the ladies. This was addressed, and it's specifically in context, for wives, and it still is in that context of, of submitting to your husband, submitting to the roles of authority, but this is not something that is strictly limited to the women. Guys, please do not look at this and say, I, have, I bear no responsibility with these verses, because the principle of who we are on the inside being more important than the display we put on the outside is critically important to how we are in the world around us. I know it is so easy for us in this time to be complainers, to let that, that frustration out. We need to be super careful about that because we aren't just representing ourselves. When you claim the name of Jesus Christ, you are representing the God of this universe. And what people are going to equate your bad attitude with, your, your unsubmissive heart with, is Jesus Christ. And do you really want people who see you coming as a believer in Jesus Christ go, Oh, it's them. I just want to walk away from them. That's the hidden person of the heart. You ought to be a joy to be around. The, the beauty of your relationship with Jesus Christ ought to spill out to your outward appearance. And it ought to be far more important than how you look in the mirror. 
Join me again tomorrow. We're going to hit, uh, honestly, we're going to hit something very brief tomorrow, at least in the context of this passage. But ladies, if you didn't really care for uh, me nailing you guys for, for the last couple ones, we're going to get to your husbands next time. So husbands, you better be listening to, to the next one. Uh, we're going to be hitting cha uh, uh, chapter 3, verse 7 uh, next time. So I'll see you again.